What is up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Saturday. Saturday, March 18th, 2023. Is that a little too loud for you guys nursing a hangover from St. Patty's Day? Oh, sorry, I'll dial it back a minute, uh, a bit. <clears throat> How's this sound? I'll talk really, really slow. Just kidding. All right. Day three of the cold. Enjoying every minute of it. Who knows when it will end? Maybe never. So how's your bracket? How's your uh, March Madness bracket? Nobody cares. Nobody fucking cares. Um, today's topic, we're going to get right into it because uh, you're going to have to suffer through my voice and I, I don't enjoy listening to myself either. So uh, Marvin Harrison, I'm sorry, Marv, that I have to talk about you in this disgusting voice, but uh, we're going to make the best of it. Cough drops and tissues are my life, my best friends. Anyway, where let's talk about Marvin Harrison. Where can he improve? Can he improve? What is his mindset? What is uh, what does Brian Hartline see in him? What does Brian Hartline think Marv's mindset is from a big picture point of view? Uh, not just you know snap to snap, game to game or whatever, but um, like we know, we know, you know he was the best receiver in the freaking country last year. There's hands down, screw the Bolitnikoff award bull crap. <clears throat> he was the best receiver in college football, unanimous All-American. In 2022, he was top 20 in receptions. He had 77. He was number six in 1,263 yards, number six in yards in the country, and number four in the country in, in touchdowns with 14. So, dude put up numbers, made highlight reel catches seemingly every week, uh, took a cheap shot in the playoff game that eventually cost us the game, in my opinion. So, um, what does Brian Hartline think about the uh, the Bolitnikoff Award and and how bad they screwed that up? Let me turn this up so you can hear. And the background noise is going to suck. This is recorded at the uh, the Woody, and apparently it's like a, a playground uh, sometimes. Who knows? So here we go. Go Tartline. Yeah. You didn't catch that. He said anybody that has two eyes could see he should have won that award. Yeah, no shit, Chet. Uh, well, what does Marv have to prove? Here it is in his words. Yeah, you know, I think you got to go out there and prove it. Um, I was last year's last year and had that. Um, the honor going into the next year is, you know, it's one thing we got to live up to it like during the season. So that's what's up. So. He could have been a top 10 pick uh, this in this draft if he were eligible. Uh, he wants to improve his ability to extend plays into more yardage after the catch. So uh, this is how he, he views that. There's always room to get better everywhere. Whether that's getting out of your brakes faster, um, ball skills. Um, but I think one thing in particular that I'm kind of like, focused on is making your plays after the catch. Um, we're trying to turn, you know, five yard catches to 20, or 20 yard catches to 60, things like that. So uh, I think that's one thing I'm conscious about for this next year and practicing that. Yeah, Hartline says that uh, Harrison still has room to grow uh, because he's no longer comparing himself to other college receivers. He's comparing himself to the best in the NFL. Here's what Coach Hartline had to say about that. To does he want to be, you know, an, an old hand or an old turn, eighteen year old, or is he comparing himself to Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams? I mean, perspective is. I don't even know how you would think it would be otherwise besides the things he's trying to chase. It's not him and her on a smaller level, like, you know, college football. I mean, I think his goal is like a lot of other guys, not just him, he's not sheltered at college football. I think he has perspective and what to chase his path. So the small mindedness, I don't think really Marvin has ever possessed that. He's only the first to think big, I think he's probably doing so perspective is obviously important and Marv's dad and, and his mom uh, both have, have uh, drilled that into, into Marv. So great point by Hardline. I agree hundred percent. If you're just chasing the best receiver in college football, where's that going to land you? 
you know, if you're chasing the best on the planet, that's a different story. Uh, here's additional uh, stuff about the mindset that uh, Marv has. So inches, so degrees of improvement. Some people are looking for drastic improvement with feet. He's looking for inches, you know, uh, about NIL and, and all that crap. Harrison said his dad handles his NIL and, uh, inquiries and it allows him to focus on football. Um, and so I, I, I don't think that's ever going to be a distraction. Um, Heartline did have an interesting comment that uh, I think the chase he's on, uh, let me just play that for you. Uh, I think what the chase, the chase he's on, uh, he's doing what he to be. So in his mind, he doesn't know everybody's celebrating. So you guys are celebrating. He's on that same chase. So. so he doesn't understand because he's he's got his nose to the grindstone. He sees room for improvement. He doesn't understand what you know, the, the country and Buckeye Nation uh, think he's, you know, the best thing ever. So uh, it's great to have that mindset and, and realize he really hasn't accomplished anything yet, you know. Um, one thing I, I didn't want to put a finer point on the yards after catch point that, uh, Marv mentioned early, earlier on, he said, uh, um, uh, the exact words were, I want to, I'm trying to turn five yard catches into 20 or 20 yard catches into 60, things like that. So it's one thing I'm conscious about just going into next year and practicing for that. Uh, by the way, he was, he did spend his spring break in Texas working with, a. uh, I believe a, a footwork coach or a speed coach. I'm not sure. Anyways, so to the back to the yards after catch uh, in 2022, ranking him in the country with a 50% of your team snaps. So all receivers and 50% at 50% of your team's total snaps. Uh, 9.7 led the country. That's that's yards per catch. After the catch, yards of yak, yards after catch, average. Okay, so the average is 9.7 led to country. This is Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. Then uh, to mix in a couple other guys you might have heard of, 8.9 was Quentin Johnston uh, from TCU. 8.1, Marvin Mims from Oklahoma. Emeka Ibuka, you might have heard of him. 7.1 yards at yak, average after catch. So 7.1 yards after each catch he was averaging. Marv at 4.2. Not great, Bob. So that is clear that he needs to work on on that yards after catch and spring those those short routes or or mid mid routes and, and take them the distance, you know, like we see so many other players do. So legit points uh to work on. And great mindset. The kid's going to keep grinding. You know that. And uh, I, I I don't see how he, he gets screwed out of that Belitnikoff Award this year. But more importantly, he needs to help us bring home the big trophy. So that's all I got for you today. Talk to you tomorrow. Don't forget, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, YouTube Live, me, Jeff, and Sean. We're going to talk Buckeye football. I'll talk to you later. And uh, go Bucks.